Motivation is trash and you need to stop relying on it. Let me explain to you why. How many times have we sat down to do some important work filled with motivation only to stop an hour, sometimes 30 minutes, sometimes even only five minutes after working? I'm extremely guilty of this. I'm sure many of you are also probably guilty of this as well. Once that burst of motivation dies out, the work just starts feeling borderline impossible and we're just stuck there at our desk with work that feels too difficult to complete. And because of this motivation cycle, you might make the mistake of believing that you're just inherently lazy and that you'll always be a procrastinator. But here's the thing, you're not lazy. I'm not lazy either. We all have the ability to get stuff done. So let me explain how I figured out how to work without needing motivation and how I made work fun. And stick around because at the end of this video, I'm going to be sharing with you a specific action step that you could implement in your life tomorrow. It seems that we only really need motivation for things that suck. We don't really need motivation to play video games for hours on end or eat some delicious food. A lot of the time we perceive our own self-improvement, our fitness and our work as tedious as it like as it sucks it's like a, it's like a chore we have to do it and eating the junk food and playing the video games are perceived as like the fun things to do but what if we could make the work that we have to do fun and then as a result not need to rely on motivation to do it which youtuber do you think will become more successful the youtuber who only works when he's motivated and just wants a million subscribers as soon as possible or the YouTuber who thoroughly enjoys making each and every video and pours his heart into each video and just naturally spends a lot of time with it? The answer is obvious. When we only focus on the final result that we get at the end of our hard work and dedication, it's so easy to lose motivation because we, we were only motivated for the shiny result, the shiny object. Intrinsic motivation is when you're doing it for its own sake. There's something about the process that's either enjoyable or that feels meaningful to you and therefore you're doing it for internal reasons, for your own reasons. And basically all the evidence shows that in, internal or intrinsic motivation is way more powerful and durable than extrinsic motivation. And in fact, the more extrinsic motivation you have, even if you are intrinsically motivated to, to do something, extrinsic motivators often crowd out intrinsic motivators. So when we're putting in the work towards our goal and we don't immediately get any results, there's no visible progress, the motivation dies just like that because we were only motivated for the result in the first place. We never thought about enjoying the process. For example, if you want a jacked aesthetic physique, instead of focusing on only getting that cool physique, wanting that six pack, wanting to look like Chris Bumstead, start falling in love with fitness and going to the gym and immerse yourself and savor each workout. That's exactly how I went from my skinny physique to my pretty lean and aesthetic physique now that I have. And I'm not denying that there are going to be parts of the journey that are a bit boring and that you won't feel like doing to do those tasks. You have to rely on your discipline and your your view of the bigger picture of why you're even putting in so much effort in the first place. The, the way we think about something profoundly changes the way our physiology responds to it, the way our body reacts. There is an enormous difference between I have to do this and I get to do this. Whenever we find ourselves thinking, oh, I have to do X. We can always do a reframe in our minds. I choose to do X. I get to do X. I am blessed to be able to do X. And just knowing the fact that we're going to get results, we're going to get great results in the future from the effort we put in now, that will give us a great amount of patience, of perseverance, and just like peace of mind that will allow us to get through those boring work sessions and be able to not rely as much on motivation. But the next thing that I'm about to tell you is probably the most important thing that I've said in this video. So make sure you listen up. To successfully change your habits and be able to work relentlessly without motivation, you must be able to change the identity you hold about yourself. Your self-image, the way you view yourself, the things you tell about yourself subconsciously, these play a big factor. Because as they say, how you do anything is how you do everything. If you consistently hold yourself to a lower standard, you wake up whenever you feel like it, you only go to the gym when you feel like going to the gym, you only work on your business, your schoolwork, when it's convenient and when you're motivated to do it. You're reinforcing a narrative to yourself. You're subconsciously telling yourself that you're a procrastinator, that you're lazy. If you see yourself as someone who's unproductive, lazy, procrastinates, you're gonna act in accordance with that identity you have about yourself. If you could change your identity to someone who's fully invested in his work and loves working, you're gonna be way more productive than the guy who's trying to find a cheap hack or like some sort of shortcut 
to the results. So how do we actually go about changing your identity? Well, actually all starts with action because the actions that we take every day are actually reinforcing the identity we have about ourselves. And action will always come before motivation. And you'll actually find out that taking action and getting stuff done will give you more energy and more motivation. Before you do anything, you must take action. Enough of this planning, no, no more over planning, no more over analyzing. Once the subconscious lizard loser side of your brain starts to take over and starts to consume your thoughts, it will cause you to procrastinate. It'll cause you to rationalize why you shouldn't put in the work today, why you should skip the gym, why you it doesn't matter if you eat unhealthy food. As soon as you feel that inkling, that urge to do something you know you shouldn't do, eliminate it instantly. I want you to actually capitalize on what I'm telling you and actually put it into action because the worst thing we could do is consume a bunch of information and just never act on it. As a result, just continue to waste our time and reinforce the content addiction that so many of us have. All right, so hear me out. This is called the one task rule or eating the frog. So basically what you're going to do is each night you're going to set yourself one to three tasks to do the next day. And if you're able to complete those one, two or three tasks, you can consider that day a win. It could be working out for 15 minutes. It could be working on your business or your schoolwork for an hour, but you're going to wake up and immediately get that task out of the way. Just get it done. And the rest of the day is going to feel so much better because you know, deep inside that you've gotten that hard task out of the way and you've proven to yourself that you're able to work without motivation. It's called eating the frog because it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable, but it's ultimately worth it because you're going to stack up the, that momentum and that consistency will compound into some great results. They say it takes about three weeks or 21 days to form a habit. But I think if you try this for the next one to two weeks, you, especially if you're a high achiever, if you're watching this type of video, you're try, you're seeking to improve yourself. I think you're totally capable of making this a habit in one to two weeks. Try this out and see how it goes. And if you need any more clarification, just rewatch this video. Or if there's anything I missed, let me know in the comments. My coaching information is in the description if you're trying to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. I have reduced the amount of available times in there just because my schedule's been a lot more busy lately. And again, thank you so much for watching this video and consider subscribing for more.